Okay, basically, yeah, this is the real introduction to the video, but don't tell Faruza because she doesn't know. But Faruza, if you are watching, sis, you did try to guess me up just a little bit too much in this video, so I thought, now let me come through with this introduction because there's no way you can outguess me. I love you. <laughs> I absolutely love you. I adore you. I give God thanks for our friendship and our sisterhood. And when I think about how wild 2020 has been, for me, my whole year would look very different without you and your friendship in my life. Since I'm so grateful for you, these two themes, joy and resilience, who has taught me more about joy than you? Who has taught me about being resilient, how to pick my head up, how to keep on keeping on, how to persevere and endure? All of these lessons have come from you and they've now spilled out into 2020 and spilled out into too much sauce. And so this year has gone ahead, too much sauce has gone ahead because of your love and your encouragement. This episode is dedicated to power, to people and to photos. And it's my message to you to tell you that I love you. Take care. Bye. My whole babes, my actual babes. In fact, in all of lockdown, this is my intro. Hey, babes. Hey, babes. <laughs> hey, babes. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're glowing. Please give me the the schedule. Give me the goss. Need some sun. You need to get out of London. And <laughs> get, uh, that's it. Where have you just come back from? Um, I just came back from Cyprus. Cute. A big lockdown. Mm. And also this weekend? From Kent. <laughs> <laughs> not, as, um, not as sweet as Cyprus, but yeah. Oh. Just getting some rest in wherever you can. Mm. Nah, all the way to the rest, boy. You gotta have the rest in these streets. So this is too much sauce, and someone I need to celebrate is our whole babes on the other side of this Zoom call. Um, her name is Faruza, aka Bantarella, but we won't get into private jokes. So this girl right here, guys, is someone who gives me joy, absolute joy. Even to think, oh, I want to be with you right now and cuddle you through the screen. Uh, but I need to celebrate you and Golden Ashes and just get a feel and a vibe. Um, yeah, for who you are, what you do, and I want to tease out Golden Ashes. We've got a couple photos um, to go through and to talk about when we're talking about people and joy and resilience. Um, and so who better to chop it up with than my sister in crime? So. <laughs> um, okay, before I get into Golden Ashes, tell us who you are and what do you do? Um, so my name is Faruza and um, I am a photographer, creative director, all around creative um, and I love people, I love to gather people and share stories. So that's who I am. Mm. And tell us about Golden Ashes. Um, so Golden Ashes um, was really a heart project that kind of uh, was birthed after uh, losing my sister and my niece and her family um, in Grandfather Tower. Um, uh, and not immediately but like a year had passed since the tragedy and I had seen how the media had handled it and how the government had um, handled this community that had gone through something so tragic and something that's just like come out of a movie um, and not shown them the dignity and the, the care and the compassion that they needed. Um, and I thought of my own sister and my family who, um, yeah, like were some of the most, imp most important people to me. Um, not having their stories told um, with truth and I just wanted to do something about it. So um, I had gone to my first silent walk in April, which was like April, 2018, um, which was basically when I was able to face um, the tower. Cause before that I couldn't really go to the area. I couldn't really face it. Um, but for some reason I knew it was time to connect and reconnect with this community knew exactly what I was going through, um, through the grief and the confusion of what this tragedy is. Um, so that day I went on the walk. This is a very long story of it, but um, no, I met, I met um, a guy called Bilal, who um, was a survivor who lived in the tower. And um, I think he just saw me quite lost in the crowd, um, just really angry at what, of what had happened and even then the towel wasn't covered like seven months on um and it was just like really confusing and not sure what to do 
um, and he saw me and he he asked who I am um, and he kind of shared a bit of his own journey um, joining Grandfather United and basically speaking truth to power and fighting against um, these powers that should have been there, should have been taking care of his community, but really they had to um, organise themselves and stand for those who couldn't really stand. Um, and he just said these words that he channels his anger into um, speaking up for those who can't anymore and sp to stand up for himself as well in his community. So that really inspired me to, to, to figure out like, what can I do? What is gonna help me and my community heal? And so Golden, Ash Golden Ashes really came the next day. I felt like um, really called um, by God as I prayed, like, what should I do? And how do I channel this anger? Um, to do a photo book and what seemed really insignificant and even just kind of foolish, like what does a photo book do um, has really connected me to so many incredible people um, and allowed me to hear stories of people that I think are heroes and um, in the history books, their names will be written there for coming together and, and fighting for justice and really creating a, a legacy of change. Um, which inspires me every day. So I've been meeting with survivors, bereaved volunteers. Um, that's how I met you, my sister. Um, <laughs> yeah, like to just hear the stories and to put it together and share a different narrative, one that is um, one that we can all be so proud of, the way this community came together like never before, um, to, to basically pick each other up and to know that there is still joy there's still life worth living um and that we're, we're much more resilient much more intelligent and dignified than i guess the government and the media would like to portray mm. yeah. bars bars we're five minutes in and you're spilling bars <laughs> you know what's so mad i didn't know that well maybe i did know but that Bilal was one of the first people you had you had met on the silent walk because he was one of the first people i kind of met through volunteering so even sis you know what i just really feel that our lives just do this all the time every time i hear a story from you i'm thinking wow that really resonates so how we met and this is what i love about this video call you know let's just spill the tea because there are so many stories and so many miracles just between us to say Wow, a lot of this feels very natural, but at the same time, it feels very ordained. So, yeah. shout out to Jacob, brother Jacob, Saint Jacob, who we love. Um, I think introduced us. We we had an event over in Brixton one Wednesday night. I can't remember which one it was. I can't remember which one it was. But anyway, on the night he said, "I don't know if you've met Faruza, but I really think you two should connect." And so we connected, and then next thing I know, we went for a for a drink or maybe some chips or something, buffalo wings at the curtain. <laughs> and then we planned uh, the first event, Our Stories. So before I get to Our Stories, what was your vision events wise and, and why photography to tell stories through? So I think it's kind of grown and very organically. Like um, I used to be an events manager before um, and then picked up photography um, as part of like wanting to be a better creative director basically and so I never thought that I would create a photo book like a year into my photography journey but I've just saw the power of like what images can do and just putting a face behind you know this tragedy and trying to trying to like rehumanize it um, I think it's important to see that these are real people who could be your brother your sister your friend who have gone through something that they definitely didn't deserve or just because they're from a certain class or race you know they're still human um so I just thought photography is really powerful in kind of sharing stories um and hearing from them directly rather than from a third party of what they think the tragedy is or what life is like um since like living through that um, but then when I met you and your like passion to host and and bring people together I felt like it felt very organic like why don't we do an event where people can share stories in person but I'm gonna let you finish because no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite mad to think the same venue we met in was then the same venue that we held the first 
event our stories in. I'm just yeah. thinking like, I think for me coming to Brentham, having my heart broken by what I'd seen. And then I think, yeah, a year later meeting you and the merge of like, okay, I feel really passionate about this, but now there's a way for me to continue volunteering and to meet the people who I was kind of just meeting on the ground, but they all kind of, yeah, just gelled all together. So by the time that first event happened and someone like a Bilal, the first time I heard Bilal speak, he was, Bilal, if you're watching, we love you. You are probably yeah. one of the most like electric. Inspiring guys. Firing, just and yet he's always got time for you it doesn't matter how busy he is if he sees you he will make sure to come over and say hi hug you up and and here i am i think i was doing this panel event and he'd made the point with some of the people probably from government in the room or whoever was in the room and just said you know if the funds are not going to be released because you're waiting for an emergency that tells me you do not see Grenfell as an emergency and his voice and his words just kind of it, it just it, it just yeah rocketed through the whole room and I thought wow there's something about this guy he's very he's different he's he, yeah he's just so so yeah electric I suppose is the word I got for him but then seeing him come through and come down and knowing that this community is so tight-knit um I'm really glad sis that yeah, as you said, images and, and photos are really, 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 really powerful. So I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate Golden Nashes. I want to celebrate some of these photos that you've kindly sent me. So I'm going to try and do this share the screen thing on Zoom. I've never done this. So hold out, Lords. We ask for your help. <laughs> desktop. I had to clean my desktop because I didn't want my desktop to be looking hella wild on the, the old YouTube. Okay, so I don't know what order this is going to go in, but I'm going to pick... Mm, I'm gonna pick this photo first. Yes. Okay. Let me move this bar here. Let me move here. Okay. Tell me who these gorgeous women are, sis. Yeah. These these amazing women. Um. So this is Sue and Maxine, and um. Yeah. The way this community is, they are just so full of, you know, full of heart for their community. Um. And Sue is one of the community kind of volunteers who I really admired um, and connected after Grenfell. Um, but I had no idea that she was actually my niece's nursery school teacher. Um, and she was very close to her and, and was really devastated by this tragedy that took the lives of 72 people, um, 18 of them being children. Mm. And so she kind of has poured out into this, this community to kind of help rebuild and um, yeah, just restore people's hope um, to keep going kind of thing. So I approached her and was like, I'd love to photograph you. Um, yeah, cause she's just down, <laughs> she's down for a community. Um, and I was just very inspired by that and wanted to hear about um, her experience. Um, and she brought her daughter along, Maxine. Um, and what I really love about this photo is it just, it really shows that even in the face of going through something like that where it's completely broken this community they're still able to have joy and still able to um hold on to each other basically um mm. sue for me again someone that i'd met early early on um when volunteering so even to know like yeah she's part of the project i just thought oh everyone who i kind of yeah walked and journey with in the early days having hearing their stories because sometimes when you're on the ground volunteering you ain't got time to be chopping up life story life story but she was someone who i first met and really um really protected me obviously i'm in east grenfell's west and i didn't really have any business being in west but i just been volunteering and, and there was a few people yeah that was just like who is this girl why is she here and sue was like no 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 she's she's down for the cause she's down for the people so to see this photo and i haven't met maxine actually i never met maxine but we worked together on um the christmas for grenfell project which was amazing and yeah seeing sue's heart come to life when there are kids about and there's just chaos happening she just brings yeah everything back together again so this photo sis is really really sweet you've really captured just like their joy and do you remember the first time as well during um, for our stories Sue was like oh I want to share but I don't want to share and then the mm. second time round, she said no I'm gonna share so to hear her story and for her to share it herself at the second our stories how did that feel for you 
it was incredible like just to see how people grown throughout this journey um and like finding their voice and wanting to tell their own story and not have it told for them is like it's empowering and that's what I've really taken from this community is how they've empowered themselves yeah to to share themselves and to own their narrative so it's just amazing to see her speak so boldly and passionately like mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and I feel like it's something that we've all grown in um including myself so yeah it's just been an honor to hear from everyone really yeah I need to share this other photo that you took sis this one if this doesn't scream joy I don't know what does this is just oh even the mother daughter bond everything is captured and then unity in the back um how does Sue for you or in this shoot at this moment what was going on before you you clicked for the camera and this shot was taken what was going on I guess like Sue and, and many other people who live um in Kensington really are about unifying themselves and so it just it reflects who she is and her heart, but also this community of so many diverse backgrounds and, and people coming from all walks of life, um, living together and fighting for each other. Um, you don't really see that, I think, in other places in the UK. And so even in the aftermath of Grenfell, of how they were able to keep going, how they were able to kind of, um, and I'm sure you can speak into this, like the volunteering that happened and the way people came together um and just came with all kinds of 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 goods just to help in whatever way they could yeah. um yeah it's, it's it is that unity that we have as like this 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 melting pot that is london yeah yeah west london it has that vibe it has that feel and and when you say unity it's amazing yeah. even between the volunteers we kind of adopted the same the same energy that we saw from the locals because well there wasn't really much time to spend arguing you needed to get things done and so to work with a sue who was so like on it you just thought okay if she's leading i'm following man if sue's got it yeah i'm i'm good i'm good so yeah the backdrop of having unity for that photo um yeah it's a really sweet photo sis that's a gorgeous one um okay let me bring into the frame let's go here next Cheese! Happy faces. I love this one. Tell me who these gorgeous people are. So these guys um, actually came to a bunch of um, workshops that we decided to do. Um, and that was really to hear more of the young people's voices um, in the community. I felt like we weren't hearing much of that. Um, and as much as we are angry and disappointed in the government, there are also people who want to make change and to have their voices heard. So I just wanted to make space for that. Um, and so we ran these six workshops um, for 16 to 25 year olds. And um, you could basically learn different types of creative storytelling. Um, and this particular one was photography. Um, and we collaborated with the London Transport Museum um, who, re who previously had employed Khadija Say. Mm -hmm. who lived in the tower and sadly passed away um yeah she was also a photographer and so it was just nice to be able to do that in her honor and just have the tools and I guess the knowledge to share to these young people who want to tell stories and, and get into that so yeah this is the end of the photography workshop of just just seeing how the young people were able to come together and like yeah just be inspired to go and tell their own stories as well was um, a real joy and it kind of all ended up um, doing a showcase so we did another Our Stories event um, which I just love collaborating with you to do um, because you really do share that heart of sharing people's stories with dignity and honour and yeah you're my favourite presenter I know you know this already but it's, just, it's been the best um, so yeah that happened what a week before lockdown um, yeah yeah i think so, that might have been other than jacob's them times event i think our stories may have been the last or one of the last events that i hosted and i'm really grateful to god that that we were able to squeeze that one in i just think mm -hmm. like there was a lot that that event um we heard from new people but also there was just this vibe and this feel of real honesty real vulnerability that 
by the time lockdown happened, it was almost this reminder of how important community is, how important it is to tell your story, whatever your story may be. So even Quaker, I can see Quaker sitting there. The first time I met him was through the event that I did for creative, um, creative writing, creative storytelling, and just the boldness in this brother I t- and the encouragement, the word harmony will always stick with me and you because- I love <laughs> Yes, yeah. So yeah, just finding people like him, I think he's South, isn't he? And Ermin as well, tell me about your friendship with Ermin. So Ermin I've known for years and years um, and we used to do events together and she's come alongside me again um, to project manage Golden Ashes. Um, Yeah, this team that is behind Golden Ashes, the volunteering their time and they're most professional. They're just so good at what they do. Um, It's been a real joy, but yeah, like being able to also do Golden Ashes with seven other people who, yeah, just want to see this community heal and move forward um, has been such a joy. So yeah, so she also ran a workshop at the end um, and it was about owning your story. Um, yeah, so that was, yeah, it's just a real special journey that we did with those six weeks. Um, and I'd never really put workshops together. So a lot of this has been new, um, but just the joy of seeing people grow and being inspired to to own their story essentially has been like worth it. Um, And then at the end, having the showcase at our stories and hearing from the community, like you were saying, it's just, um, it makes it all worth it because you realize you're not alone um, in your journey and in your process and that you do have a community that are also fighting for that hope and that joy. Yeah. Looking at this photo makes me miss events, you know? So what uh, what I would give to just be like, all right, Frizzle, let's go. Because the first one, for those of you who don't know, I think we planned in a matter of what, 14 days? No, less than yeah. that. 18, Maybe. I think it was. It was how many? 18 days. Yeah, 18 days sounds about right. But literally, if I open my WhatsApp now and go to photos, there's like 10 versions of the flyer. Yep, fantastic. Mm-hmm. We've got the flyer up to go. We've got the invites going. And it just went to show like, you don't need much to pull people together, really. You don't need, uh, yeah, like loads of money even to just say, look, here's a microphone. Shouts goes out to the department store in Brixton who let us use the venue and basically take over for the evening. But the turnout was was pretty amazing. So any, any sort of the feedback, before we get to those who, yeah, are from the Grenfell community, what kind of feedback did you get from the volunteers? Um. Sorry, the volunteers for the event? Yeah, or you're looking at, you know, an ermine, or you're looking at the people who's behind Golden Ashes. Um, it must be the joy that they must feel, or even just what they get out of the event. You must get some really nice feedback. Yeah, I think people are always, like, surprised to hear just how, um, I don't know how to say it, but just how bold and how um, courageous this community is what they've gone through and they're still able to stand firm and and fight for justice and and still yeah have so much compassion and keep showing up I think it makes it much really worth it like all the time all the hard work that's, that goes into it it's it's worth it when you see everyone coming together like that yeah yeah these people like that. Oh. Good people, good, good people. Okay, let me bring your next one. I wanna go to Ed next. Where are you, Ed? Ah! Yes, a legend in the game. Oh my days. Real life hero, honestly. (laughs) Really, honestly. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I love Ed so much. He's one of the most inspiring people I've ever met. And um, he was one of the first people I shot for Golden Ashes and he, also lived in Grenfell Tower and he yeah just his heart for people and the way he's with with his fellow neighbours and bereaved family members have come together to fight in in Grenfell United and to write white papers and um, changing housing policy all the things that they're doing um, while still recovering from this tragedy it is it just blows my mind Um, and we actually got to photograph him in a place that he really likes to go to, which is bird watching. He likes to go to his local park and just like learning and, and finding out more about this person who has all these incredible interests and has such a rich history that he's lived um, 
often the media doesn't want to share that they just want to show a certain image when it comes to people who live in social housing um, and it's just not true um, so it was a real joy to even like learn about bird watching I knew nothing about that before I didn't even know that was a thing um, so we got to photograph him there and film him with um, the guys at Candle Creative um, yeah and he's just honestly someone I really look up to um, yeah, and he's and he's been really supportive with God Nashes, which has been amazing to see. So he really is a legend. I mean, I remember him sharing at the first our stories, and just yeah, you know what comes to mind when I think about Ed is that he's got all the time in the world for you. You know, you want to talk to him, you want to understand something, he will take his time to explain it, and that's what he did that night. And I think it was just a really beautiful backdrop to one the community and how resilient the community is but the lengths that people will go to to make sure people are looked after and, and people are cared for um and so even yeah even for you in your journey sis what what are some of the standout lessons that ed has taught you um so many i i love to just chat to ed he'll just be dropping gems and wisdom <laughs> and I'm, I'm like let me hear it um but i've i've learned about you know dignity about having self-respect about um yeah just just knowing that you're fighting a good fight um no matter how hard it gets that he just doesn't relent um and just his compassion I mean he's gone through this tragedy but his his heart is very much there are thousands of people still in the UK who are living in housing that has this same cladding um that is essentially a death trap and he's putting all of his energy and all of his strength into fighting for those people who currently don't have a voice um, because he's gone through Grenfell and he's using that to, to leverage, to speak to these people, these politicians and say things have to change. Um, and just to see that fight, that resilience um, is, yeah, you don't really see that very often. And I, I've never seen that before. So they've really shown me what unity is. They've shown me what um, courages and what using your voice can do um, and just speaking on Grenfell United especially they have such a humanitarian response to this tragedy like they've looked after the community whether it's housing needs whether it's looking after children and a lot of things that, that go unseen um, and it's being led by um, survivors and the bereaved so it just yeah it blows my mind what you're able to do even after going through what you've gone through um so yeah I could I could go on I could go on about these guys because they're heroes um yeah oh yeah he is a legend in the game I'm so excited for the book you know sis like you know when you're just gonna sit on a chapter because you already know it's gonna be true it's gonna be good let me go to do you want me to show this photo of Tash or you want a different one no we can show this one um okay. Let me full screen. Another legend. Oh, yes. wow. The one Tasha's, and the Tasha is honestly, I don't know how she does it, absolute champion, but um, she's the chair of Grandfather United um, and has, yeah, just behind the scenes doing so much for the community um, and working on behalf of, you know, the hundreds of people who are either survivors or bereaved family members um, to make sure that they're looked after um, mm -hmm. post Grenfell, whether that's mental health support or all the different things that they need, especially housing, um, since so many people like lost their homes. Um, and speaking up to the council to make sure that they're getting the care that they need and the support. Um, so yeah, this was shot at Grenfell United um, with the guys at uh, um, Candle, Ben and Zach, um, the loveliest guys, really who are also doing a short documentary film alongside the photo book. Um, and yeah, it's just the behind the scenes, but I just, yeah, I, I really do look up to um, Tash and all she's been able to do. And these are people who have families, you know, they have responsibilities, they have full-time jobs and are volunteering their time, coming after work. Um, to figure out strategies and how to reform the fire departments and all of these different things. Um, 
and really strategizing to make sure that this never happens again so yeah yeah but I don't think I'd met you at this point I think I'd met Tash before I'd before I'd met you to be fair like we we had done this parliamentary event for the six month anniversary so that's a while ago now but um there was four people including Bilal actually so Bilal and Tash and I love their friendship you know oh these two yeah when I see them I just think oh your friendship goes so Dash was giving her story at this parliamentary event and obviously there's all these MPs sitting there and people are whispering, some people are getting up, some people are walking out, some people are crying. There was just a mixed bag of response. But the thing about Tasha is she just got up and she was just so like unwavering in her story. She just gave it to you as it was. It wasn't, it wasn't um, diluted in any way. She wanted people to know the truth of what had happened on that day and what it was that her and Bilal and everyone had, had come together for that particular purpose. And I think for me and my volunteering, like she really put inside me that new fire to be unwavering. Like this is what it is and this is the message and this is why it's so important. And you better listen, do you know what I mean? I don't care if you're leaving the room, the people who are sat here, you need to know what went down. And mm. she just has this really fiery, like, yeah, you did, oh, she's just, She's just so lovely, but at the same time, really, you know, she's not taking no for an answer. She's got that in her, and that is really infectious, actually. And it's what difference does it make having a woman? I don't like, not that we should be saying this in 2020, but do you see a different side of Grenfell United knowing that, yeah, you've got people, you've got women like Tash in the camp, man? Yeah. Yeah, there's, I, I think it's just, I mean, women are amazing, but it's just being able to have that nurturing side as well yeah. as yeah like the empathy really understanding people and their motives and um yeah putting all those skills into it it makes a huge difference and even just the way Grenfell United um is run and how we all go forward with this it's very much with people at the heart of it yeah. um so yeah I mean everyone who's part of Grenfell United yeah, they, they're all so caring and compassionate and it, and it really shows because they're making changes that, that previous governments have never made before, so. And they're making changes, I suppose, in the context of Too Much Source, like, they're making changes that are going to make history today. Even to think about, like, yeah, Tash and Ed and Black, or, well, Grenfell United, the, the campaign to now make every housing, like, safe, you know what I mean, and remove the cladding, not just for the sake of Grenfell, but for the sake of anyone who is living somewhere that is unsafe. It's now like UK wide, globally wide, you know what I mean? It's put, yeah. put a real perspective on like, are we safe when we go to bed at night? And that, those laws that they're, you know, everything that they're campaigning for, everything that you're doing, it's not just for the now, it's gonna be for years to come. So by the time the next generation, you're like, oh, why don't we have this problem? It's because Grenfell United was championing that, you know? Yeah. And that is something, yeah, when I talk about like history and legacy and, and everything that you're doing, sis, I get really, really excited to know the people behind the chain that's being made being made now. Um, yeah. yeah, Tasha is definitely someone I can't say enough about, man. She's, she's yeah, she's great. Um, who else have I got? Probably the cheekiest of the bunch. <laughs> oh! A whole entire babe. This is so cringeworthy, but I will put my photo up here to say <laughs> that my babes took me, my babes shot me. Um, yeah, knowing that this is at Latimer Christian Centre is is wild, given that I'd started my volunteering here. But um, yeah, why me, I suppose? This is a very like vulnerable question, but you didn't need to choose me. Like I would have supported you regardless, sis. I love you with all my heart, but yeah, why? Why choose me to shoot and put put in the book as well? Um, obviously, I think I just wanted to highlight more of the truth and more of um, the power of this community and what has happened um, after Grenfell. Um, for me personally, um, this is where I get sloppy, but you've been <laughs> such a huge champion of people and of myself um, and this project. Um, your heart to serve people is like one of my favorite things about you. Um, yeah, and I just, 
absolutely am grateful for all the connections um, that have been made. But I said this before, but like finding a friend like you has been like gaining a sister. Um, so this journey is also about, you know, believing in the good in people again. And um, I guess Golden Ashes is, is, is really highlighting that. Like, yes, there's been tragedy, but there's so much gold to be found. And um, often it's in the people and where, you know, this tragedy has come from profits being valued more than people we've kind of lost our way in that. Like we need to come back to humanity and remember that there's nothing more valuable than us. And we need to protect human life essentially. Um, so yeah, just being able to link up with you as a volunteer is crazy because I didn't know you then. Um, and even those days where, where everyone was volunteering, I couldn't really be around in the area because I, was, I guess I was still grieving um, and it was a lot to take in, but to know that there was just, you know, hundreds and thousands of people like yourself showing up and, and serving and, and making sure that people were treated with that dignity. Um, I'm so proud of you and I'm so proud of so many, so many of the people in the UK who have demonstrated that value. So, yeah. And it was just nice to, to show you where you were volunteering as well. And that is, yeah, like, you know, I only was at Lasma because that was the closest place outside of the station. That was where people, it wasn't like I knew, I'd never been to that church before. But then to go back and, and to see inside and to meet the same people. And, and that's what I love about the community. The community are not here to be slap and dash. They're not here to be doing one week in and one week. That, the same people that I was volunteering with were the same people, they were consistent. And so, yeah, to be at the top. And actually, I don't think I've been in that room to be, like, it looks small, but actually when you go in, there's so much space there. So to shoot there and to tell the story of how, yeah, that that moment is really, yeah, really changed my world, to be honest. It really brought my faith into question. Do I believe the things that Jesus says? If I do, now is the time to live them out. Like there was part of my faith that I never really tapped into because I didn't have I don't, not a reason to live out the justice side of things. Always there's a reason to be, yeah, caring towards people. We're image bearers. But when a tragedy like that happens, it, it then makes you realise, oh, actually, I believe some stuff and I need to put it into action. So to partner with you and to kind of, when I was there, I thought, what am I doing here? But now to make friendship with you, I'm just like, yeah, it, it actually is very fulfilling, you know, the stories that are being told and the events that we do together. I always come away blown away by just like, sis, we're, we're two girls, you know, two girls are just this small vision that then booms and people come and you're like, oh, wow, this isn't about us. It's not about us at all. It's 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 about the stories and, and you collecting them um, in this photo series and the book and, oh, I'm just really, yeah, really, really excited. Um, so this year is all about joy and resilience. And I think I've only got two questions uh, to sum up joy and resilience, but I really want to hear from you because if there is anyone who knows strength, no weakness, it has to be you in my life. You know, <laughs> So many times I'm on the phone to you like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you're just like, well, have we prayed about it? No, okay, fantastic. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's pray about this. Um, and so my first question is around resilience. And my question is, how has 2020 made you stronger? Oh man, um, yeah, everything has gone up, up in the air, up into flames. I don't know, everything's gone mad. Um, <laughs> but I guess, I guess when everything has gotten really uncertain and um, with the lockdown and all the plans that we'd made, um, even with Golden Ashes, it was actually meant to be released in June and COVID came along and said, nah. Like, so I think having to postpone that, um, yeah, it was a real blow because it's something that we've all been working towards, but I think it really just showed me like, where are my foundations and what's going to keep me stable throughout this year with all the things that it throws. Um, and yeah, everyone's been really going through it, but yeah, it's honestly my faith um, and journeying with you um very early on in the lockdown we just started praying together and encouraging each other and yeah just really seeing the value of having 
you know, sisterhood and having people around you who are for you um, and community. I mean, I think we went into lockdown with our stories really like filling us up. Like I, I know I was on a high for a long time, just knowing that we're all able to share that, that moment, share the love in that room. Um, so yeah, really understanding how important community is, but also, um, yeah, just knowing that there's a God who doesn't change throughout everything. So that's been my source of joy and, and my source of strength um, throughout it. And to journey with you, listen, this girl, she keeps me Christian, you know, I don't even know if I'm, I don't even know if I'm really Christian sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, like prayer and yeah, the, the, the scripture that says the joy of the Lord is my strength, like through all the things that I've been through and you know the madnesses that have happened this year is is proven that's true um and I don't really know any other source that is gonna keep me through the hard times yeah yeah listen you're bigging me up too much it's you you know you are the one you know I, I don't have a biological sister so I need to call my mum and be like mum we found her it's okay she can come <laughs> she can come and stay in my room like I just love you because there is nothing too small that you will ever say like, that doesn't matter. Everything that I go through, everything that I think about or like, oh, this is bothering me. You're like, let's talk about it. And I think in this year, of course there's been big things that have bothered us, but sometimes it's the small things, the small insecurity here or the uncertainty here. And to have you on the end of the line nearly every morning since March, to walk with you in the morning to say, yeah, okay, this is what my day looks like. Um, I need to pray through this or I need to talk through this. The amount of times I'm like, I don't need you actually to say anything. I just need to process out loud. Can you guide me? Am I on the right track? Is this right? Oh, I don't know. So yeah, I think when you talk about resiliences, a lot of that is you've taught me, you've taught me how to be resilient. You've really taught me how to, yeah, face whatever may be making me feel fearful um, and come out a lot stronger on the other side as well. So yeah, you... My 2020 would not be my 2020 without you, 100%. Um, and yeah, like you said, we went into lockdown with our story still very much buzzing in our heart. Like it was very tangible to be like, oh, wow, this is everything. It was almost like a manual to kind of, how do you keep going? How do you check in on people um, now that we're, yeah, there's there's an isolation here. We, we can't just freely go and go and see people. So I really do hope that our stories, yeah, not only blessed us, but would have blessed the people that came to kind of have as a lasting reminder to think, okay, I might be locked in, but I know the strength and the resilience of the community. Um, you touched a little bit about joy. So my last question is, um, where has your joy come from in 2020? Or where did joy come from this year? Um, yeah, you've mentioned the scripture, you've mentioned the Lord, um, but yeah, I just wanted to tease out any other stories you may have around joy. Um. Yeah, I feel like I kind of answered, you know, I jumped the gun and answered both questions. No, no, it's all good. It's uh, that's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's the people around you, isn't it? That's what that's what brings joy um, and making time for that. And and I think another element of our stories, which I really held on to, was the we had a mental health well-being afternoon. Um, and to really just think about looking after yourself and having the tools to do that is so key. So yeah, I guess that it, it plays into resilience. It plays into to knowing that you need to look after yourself. You need to know your boundaries and you need to, um, yeah, make sure you're okay so that you can be okay for others. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, listen, you are joy. You are joy <laughs> on every timeline. Um, every so, timeline. Um, Listen, I wouldn't have a too much sauce without you. The amount of times I'm like, Bruce, what should I do here? Should I do this? Should I? So yeah, knowing that I get to celebrate you for this year, given how much of an input and like, yeah, how much you've contributed to, to the ideas and the things that people will never see. You know, people will always see the flashy Instagram or they'll see the end product, but it's been you, sis, you to journey with me all the way through and, and keep my head on and say, yes, well, it's going to be all right, man. Like, it's all going to come together. I've loved 
I've really, really loved having you in my life, sis, especially in 2020. Um, and so for Golden Ashes, tell us what the plug is, what's the plan? Um, and even this is resilience, to be honest. Okay, having to reschedule, having to think, okay, well, a pandemic has come to, <laughs> there go, it's a pandemic. Like everything is, <laughs> it's a pandemic. So yeah, what are the plans? How has this year um, maybe molded something fresh to look forward to for next year? Um. I think it's it's taught me to hold everything very lightly. So it's all good. You can make plans, but it can literally change last minute. So um, hold it lightly. Um, I'm still as committed as ever to tell these stories. Um, so I really believe in them. Um, and yeah, just documenting this part of history and this truth so that we know that we've shared our stories, we've used our voice. Um, so hopefully, in the next year, we're going to release the photo book um, and have an exhibition where we can all gather social distance or whatever comes with that. But um, yeah, that's the, the plan for it. Um, and you can follow all on socials and kind of like the journey along the way. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's the plan. That's the plug. Let us know your socials. Um, so it's at Golden Lashes Project. Um, and goldenashes.com if you kind of want to follow the whole journey going to be releasing the book on there as well so yeah I love you sis thank you so much for your time I love you too I'm a real YouTuber now you know I have to do this I'll put all your details in the, <laughs> in the description um, but yeah you are you are joy in my life man thank you so much sis um all the best for all things golden ashes and i can't we should do another our stories as soon as lockdown lifts or whatever this year looks like Absolutely. next year this one will have to go even bigger than we might just have to do stuff for the fun of it like just get bouncy castles and whatnot just be like we couldn't do this a couple months ago so <laughs> i'm ready for it thank you so much so much for your time i'll catch up with you soon